Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a rational equation. We have this equation x squared plus 4x squared over x plus 2 squared equals 5 and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting three methods even though one of the methods will be incomplete. Alright, let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to use brute force and just expand everything. So if you go ahead and make a common denominator first, you can write this as x squared plus x plus 2 squared plus 4x squared equals 5 times x plus 2 squared after cross multiplying. And if you expand this, you're going to get x squared times x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus 4x squared. And then on the right hand side, you're going to get 5 times x squared plus 4x plus 4. Let's go ahead and distribute everything and then rearrange the terms. This is going to be x to the fourth. And now we're going to get uh, 4x cubed and then 4x squared, another 4x squared, which is 8x squared. And on the right hand side, I'm getting 5x squared plus 20x plus 20. Let's put everything on the same side, x to the fourth plus 4x cubed. Now I'm going to subtract this, so it's going to be 3x squared, subtract this, minus 20x, and subtract this, minus 20, equals 0. Now, we could look for rational solutions or use the quartic formula, a couple different methods to solve quartic equations. They can be solved. Unfortunately, quintic and above cannot be solved in the general sense. There are some solvable quintics which we'll probably do a video on in the near future, which will be interesting. There are qu solvable quintics uh, in groups, like there are classes of uh, quintics that are solvable. Anyways, that's a different story, but this one can be solved, or you can use the rational root theorem. So you can look at the constant term and uh, check its divisors, such as plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 5, and then test each one out. And this is going to take a while, obviously. So this is not the very first, um, it's the first method, but it's not the best one. So I'm just going to leave it like this, okay? And let's take a look at the second method. The second method is actually, in my opinion, it's pretty cool. And that's actually kind of like the coolest method, I would say probably deserves to be the third method, but I'm going to do the, this one as second. So in an equation like this, first of all, I'm going to start by writing this as a sum of two squares. Have you noticed that? This is sum of two squares. And when you have sum of two squares, that can be written in two different ways. For example, if you have a squared plus b squared, you can write it as a plus b squared minus 2ab or a minus b squared plus 2ab. Because what happens is the term in the middle cancels out. Now, what is so good about writing uh, it's writing it this way? Um, it's going to turn into a nicer form. So you got to remember or recognize or whatever. Just realize that this is these are competition uh, level problems, competition type problems. So they involve some tricks. A lot of times people complain about this, these problems, saying that oh, this is so contrived. They are uh, on purpose. Anyways, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with the second one because having a minus sign is more beneficial you'll see in a little bit why so if you go ahead and take this and simplify it and write it like this x minus 2x over x plus 2 squared this is a minus b squared that comes from here plus 2 times x times 2x over x plus 2 so i wrote the sum of two squares as this one okay makes sense now notice that when you make a common denominator, you get x squared plus 2x minus 2x. This is why uh, it's better to use the minus version, this squared, and this becomes 4x squared divided by x plus 2. And of course, the whole thing is equal to 5. Awesome. Now notice that here, the 2x cancels out, leaving us with x squared over x plus 2 squared plus 4 times x squared over x plus 2 equals 5. I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, let me put this in parentheses. And now, does it make sense? Yes. We're going to use substitution. So let's go ahead and call this something. How about T? Let's call this T. You can also call it coffee if you want, but I call it T. And now this gives me T squared plus 4T equals 5. You probably notice T equals 1 is an obvious solution because of sum of coefficients. And the other one is going to be just negative 5. Right? Okay. So there are two solutions. Let's go ahead and set each one equal to t, which is x squared over x plus 2. From here, we get x squared equals x plus 2 from this equation. And then by putting everything on the same side and factoring, we get x minus 2 times x plus 1 
equals 0. And then we're going to go ahead and find x equals 2 and x equals negative 1 from here. Are these valid solutions? We can definitely go ahead and check, right? And I'm also going to show you a graph at the end, okay? Which kind of explains um, the intersection points. So that's one of the solutions. What about the other one? We can also set t equal to negative 5, which is x squared over x plus 2. If you set equal to negative 5, you get x squared equals negative 5x minus 10. And then x squared plus 5x plus 10 equals 0. And from here, by using the quadratic formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, 25, minus 4ac, uh-oh, we get a negative discriminant, which means we're going to end up with complex solutions, non-real, okay? This is going to be the square root of negative 15, and we can write it as negative 5 plus minus the square root of 15i over 2. And i is the number whose square equals negative 1. You'll hopefully remember from uh, some of the videos that we've made, or you can check out my other channel, A plus BI, and check the uh, lecture videos. Okay, so th th those are the complex values. Are they going to count? Um, I think so, right? Why not? Uh, but that's pretty much the um, second method, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the third method, and we'll finish with that. So the third method uh, uses a similar idea, but in a slightly different way. We're still using the sum of two squares and obviously some identities. So let's go ahead and write this as, as sum of two squares again. But instead of calling the expression inside the parentheses something like t, actually we didn't call that t, uh, we called the, what did we call t? Uh, we called the difference of these two terms t because the 2x cancelled out, remember? So I'm going to do it a little differently. So let's go ahead and call this one y. Now from here we also get sum of two squares, x squared plus y squared equals 5, but the other equation gives us something else. Let's go ahead and set it equal to y. This is different because now we're dealing with variable uh, algebraic expressions, xy plus 2y. And then I want to put the 2x and 2y together. And then I want to take out a 2. And guess what? I want to square both sides. Because notice that we have sum of two squares. If I square both sides here, I'll be getting that again. So let's go ahead and square both sides. And we'll be getting this squared equals this squared which is 4 times x squared minus 2xy plus y squared equals x squared y squared. Now notice that x squared plus y squared is equal to 5, and if you call this product p, which is appropriate, right? Now you're going to get the following. 4 times 5 minus, that's a 2, right? 5 minus 2p, or not, I don't want to say that, equals p squared. And again, this is a quadratic, but this time it's a little different because we're solving for the product, not the numbers themselves. And this gives us p squared plus 8p minus 20 equals 0. And from here, I think we get 10 and 2. And one of them needs to be negative, so p plus 10 and p minus 2 will do the trick. And from here, we get p equals negative 10 and p equals 2. Let's just take a look at one of them. The other one is very similar. If the product of x and y is 2, and we also know that x squared plus y squared is equal to 5, by the way, you can go ahead and replace uh, xy with p and find it, or you can do it a little differently. Uh oh, the graph came up. x squared plus y squared is equal to 5. Now think about it. Like, product of two numbers is 2, and their sum is, the sum of their squares is 5. Those numbers have to be 2, 1, and 1, 2. And then from here, you can kind of proceed. And of course, negatives will be involved. But you got to remember, we squared both sides, so there will be some extraneous solutions probably. Let me show you the graph, and we'll finish up. Here we go. It's a rational function, but it kind of looks like a skewed parabola or some type of curve. And as you can see, it intersects y equals 5 at two points, negative 1 and 2. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.